Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We've already started talking about electromagnetic induction yesterday, and today we are going to continue that discussion with regards to the formulas that are involved. We've already seen how a changing magnetic flux will create a current or really a potential difference within the wire, within the loop, and that potential difference, of course, leads to a current. But whether the uh, magnetic flux is increasing or decreasing will change the direction of our current. So the formula we're going to talk about today is Faraday's Law of Induction, <clears throat> which basically says that any sort of EMF can be generated by a change in magnetic flux over time. Okay, EMF, of course, is just another way of saying potential difference. So it's just the unit is going to be volts. Now, it's not stated on your AP reference table, but really there should be an N as well in front of this formula, which really talks about the number of loops or turns that the flux is going through. <clears throat> and whenever we talk about the change in flux itself, okay, remember, our original formula for flux was V times A. So when we talk about a change in flux, you know, you could either calculate the flux final minus the flux initial, or you could take the change in B times A, or the or B times the change in A. Basically, <clears throat> just understand that the change in flux itself is dependent upon magnetic field and the area through which the magnetic field is going through. And keeping in mind, of course, that the angle must be zero degrees in order for the magnetic field field lines to pass straight through. And the unit for flux, of course, we've mentioned is Tesla meters squared or Weber's. <clears throat> now, notice that there's a negative sign in front of the formula. That's really because of Lenz's law, which states that the loop will oppose any change flux. Okay, so if this flux is increasing, the loop is going to create a flux in the opposite direction, while if the flux is decreasing, the loop will create its own flux in the same direction. Okay. So yesterday we mentioned how you have to be able to visualize what is happening with the problem in terms of using our hand rules. Well, let's actually take a look more carefully at the problem itself now. <clears throat> a square loop of copper wire is placed perpendicular to the lines of a constant magnetic field. So right now I know that B is equal to 5 times 10 to negative third Teslas, and the area enclosed within the loop is 0 0.2 meters squared. The loop is then turned through an angle of 90 degrees so that the plane of the loop is parallel to the field line. So if I were to draw what this is talking about, originally, the magnetic field lines were going straight through. Okay, So it's actually zero degrees from the normal line, meaning that we have our maximum amount of flux. But then they take that loop and they rotate it. So rather than having it go straight through, now the loop looks exactly like that. So when you have the lines passing through, you can see that none of the loops actually pass, none, none of the lines actually pass through the loop itself. They just pass parallel to the loop. If this is a loop over here, they're passing parallel without passing through. So in this case, this would be 90 degrees from the normal line, which would equal to zero flux. Okay, So we can see that overall, when we're talking about our change in flux, it's changing from a certain maximum amount to zero. 
So, and the time that it took was 0 0.1 second. Well, so if I'm looking for the EMF, EMF is equal to, we could leave out the negative sign for now because it's really just a reminder for us about Lenz's law, but it's equal to the change in flux over time. I'm not going to worry about N because there's only one loop right now. So the final flux, of course, is zero, but the initial flux is simply B times A divided by T. So if I plug in all of my numbers here, I end up with a, let's see, 5 times 10 to the negative third Tesla times 0 0.2 meters squared divided by 0 0.1 seconds. Now, I keep this whole thing absolute for the most part. I end up with 0 0.01 volts. Okay, so it's very straightforward to use. However, I'm going to come up with a follow-up question right now. So let's say right now there are 0 0.01 volts passing through the loop as the magnetic field is going through. Well, what if now that loop instead had a resistor attached with a value of 5 ohms? So the, if there's a resistor attached with 5 ohms, how much current would there be then? If we look at our original electricity formula, we had V equals to IR, which is really the same thing as EMF is equal to IR. So then my current would equal to the amount of EMF I have divided by the resistance. So that would be 0.1 volts divided by 5 ohms. I end up with 0 0.02 amps. So right now, let's just do one more example. A square coil of size 5 centimeters contains 100 loops. Okay, so it's telling us that the area is going to equal to side squared, which will really equal to 0 0.05 meters squared, and they tell us that there are 100 loops in this question. It's perpendicular to a magnetic field of 0 0.6 teslas, and it's pulled out of the field within a time of 0 0.1 seconds. So you guys can see that while the loop is inside the field, there is a full amount of flux. But as soon as it exits the field, of course, the flux is zero. So if we want to find what's the change in flux, that would simply be the flux final minus the flux initial. So overall, the change in flux is simply equal to B times a, okay, which is not a very large number. In fact, it's going to be 0.0015 tesla meters squared. So if I'm solving for the EMF, which equals to N times the change in flux divided by T, I end up with 100 loops times 0.0015 tesla meters squared divided by 0.1 seconds, which equals to 0 0.15 volts. Sorry, my fault. It equals to 1.5 volts. Okay. Now, if I want to do part B and solve for the current also, so, so knowing now that my EMF is 1.5 volts. I can solve for the current using the formula V is equal to I R. So I is going to equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So that ends up being 1.5 volts divided by the 100 ohms. I end up with 0 0.015 amps. But what's the direction of the current? Well, as the loop is exiting the field, the magnetic flux is getting weaker. So therefore, the loop itself will want to create its own magnetic flux into the page as it's being pulled out. So if you end up using your hand rule, you'll see that the current is going to be in the clockwise direction. 
if we're solving for the energy dissipated, there are a couple of different ways we could do this. Um, the, but the easiest way would just simply be power times time. The power, of course, from electricity is V times I times T. So that equals to 1.5 volts times 0 0.015 amps times 0 0.1 seconds. which equals to 0 0.00225 joules. However, if we're looking for the average force required to pull it out, uh, again, this could be solved for a couple of different ways, but I think the easiest way would simply be to do work is equal to force times distance. And the distance that's being pulled out would be this distance over here, because that's the amount of length that's actually pulled out. So in this case over here, to solve for the force, the force is simply equal to the work of 0 0.00225 joules divided by the distance of 0 0.05 meters, which ends up equaling to 0 0.045 newtons. An alternate method would have been to use magnetism, but it's easiest, of course, to use our original formula for energy.